Today on Gardening with Creekside, I am going to be spending some hours here in my shade garden. I am so excited. We're going to get the window box planted. We're going to plant some perennials. We're going to prune some perennials and we're going to do a brand new container that's hanging on the wall. Stay tuned. friends welcome to garden with creekside i am jenny and here we are in the shade garden that runs along the length of our house you can see we have the house right beside of us is the driveway this is my main shade garden that i have um, because of the way that our house is situated when we built our house 17 years ago we built in the middle of a field so my shade garden is very limited so this is one of my most favorite gardens in um, our yard. What we're gonna do today is a little bit of everything. Again, you're gonna spend the morning with me and we're just gonna kinda go through and get some fun things done. Again, I am really far behind on getting these items done, but it's okay, you know what? Life happens, you get it done when you can. Last night, we got like four inches of rain, so we got finally some really good rain, so the ground's gonna be nice and wet and damp for me, so when I plant those perennials, They'll do fantastic. And then later on this afternoon, we're supposed to get another batch of rain. So I'm hoping that the cloud cover will, will hold for me because videos look better when it's a little bit cloudy. And then that the rain will hold off until I get everything done. Remember, we were here several times last year. We were here in the spring when I um, did an early spring tour. Then we did the window boxes, the hay racks um, into summer. So I'll link all of those in the video description below. So you can check those out to see how it looked last year. I learned some things last year, so we're gonna tweak things just a little bit. And of course, my perennials have grown a ton since last year. So I'm not gonna put nearly as many annuals in here because as you can clearly see, the perennials are doing fantastic. So we're just gonna kind of go through what I want to do first is get the hay racks planted. So I have two. This um, long skinny one is um, all, right off the window where our kitchen table is. So we see this box all the time. Last year I put trailers in it. I had the thriller filler spiller kind of thing. Because it's so low and my zebra hydrangea is growing up so well, I am not gonna put any spillers in that container this year. Then we have um, above the Sun King, that is right outside, right the window where my kitchen sink is. Again, that Ariella Sun King is absolutely magnificent and glorious. So I'm not gonna put a spiller in that either because I don't want them to compete with one another and spill over. Um, and then we have a new wall hanger that I'm gonna show you I'm so excited about. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, all of these hay racks containers came from Kinsman Garden Company. I bought them online. Again, I will link that in the video description so you can check those out. But without further ado, let's get to planting. Okay, friends, so here we are. I have my long hay rack. There is still some potting soil in here from, uh, I guess that would have been my fall plantings. So we're gonna come in here and get it completely cleaned out. I, you know that I have talked to y'all about this over and over and over again, how important it is to clean out and start with fresh soil every season. This is going to take a hot minute to do this. Um, one thing I do love about Kinsman Garden is that their products are really high quality. Um, this is the liner that I bought with the hay rack, gosh, this time last year, not even a little bit earlier, and it is still in really great shape. So I don't have to, um, not going to have to replace it this year, which is a fantastic thing. So what I'm going to do <laughs> Cause this is going to take a minute it's just get this all this potting soil um out of here okay so we've got um all the potting soil out of here the reason that you want to start with fresh potting soil every year is a couple of reasons one you could still have some roots left over from last year 
that is really going to inhibit how much moisture it holds, um, how freely the new roots can go in there and grow. So you want to get rid of that. If you have any, you know, pests that have laid their eggs, you want to get rid of that, clean it out and start brand new with fresh potting soil. What I'm going to do with my old potting soil is just simply put it in my compost pile. That way it just adds to it. It's recycled. We can use it later again in the composting, you know, life cycle. So I'll move that out. Now, it was interesting. I was just reading last night in Fine Gardening Magazine. If you don't subscribe to that, that's a great source for inspiration and some information. Um, I was reading in Fine Gardening, their latest edition, and they had a horticulturist that was giving tips on planting containers. And his suggestion was to, when you're doing containers, in the bottom of your container to put compost and then put your potting soil on top. That way, the new fresh plants can easily get established in that potting soil. As the season progresses, their roots will go down. They'll hit that compost and get all the great nutrition that they need. And the compost holds onto moisture a little bit more than like say potting soil may. So it's got those great nutrients. It has more moisture in it. So that was a really great little tip. So I'm going to implement that tip on my containers today, my planters hay racks. Um, so we're going to get this guy out of the way. And we're going to get the land and sea going. Um, we use the Espoma land and sea compost. It's a great one. So we're just going to come in here. I'm not quite sure how much it's going to take. Maybe half a bag. I believe this planter is, oh my gosh, it's pretty big. It's their biggest um, rectangular hay rack that they make because of, of course, this is a pretty big window. So we've got land and sea down there in the bottom. And then we're going to use the Proven Winners Potting Soil on top. dancing around my bleeding heart here. And remember, you always want to fill it up. Put as much potting soil in here as you possibly can. Again, you need as much room for your roots to grow as possible. Again, holds the moisture, holds the food, whole nine yards. Okay, so I told you that last year I did kind of the whole thriller filler spiller um, concept on this hay rack and while it was absolutely stunning and gorgeous it really the spillers interfered with the bleeding hearts and my zebra hydrangea the zebra is absolutely stunning this year so there's i do not want to mess her up because it just the the hay rack planting got so big and spilled over it was all up in the hydrangea so it couldn't get that morning light that it needed and just really kind of inhibited it so what we're going to do is keep it really simple today and I'm going to use um, some dragon wing, angel wing begonias in here. These are fantastic annuals for shade. They, um, you can tell, <laughs> they have some nice great height to them. This is just called a pink angel wing begonia. The spacing on these guys is going to be about every 15 inches. So I'm thinking because again, I want it full. I just don't want it spilling over. So I think what I'm going to do is there's one, two, three, four window panes. You know me, I'm very um, symmetrical here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do four angel wings. 
And of course, I've got to get all up in here and there's a spider web. So spider, I'm sorry, but you're gonna get disturbed here. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna turn this around huh? that way. So we can go ahead and start leaning over that way. Here we go, so forth. Everybody's kind of in front of a window pane here, like such. Let's see, this one's a little short. Let's see if we can get a taller one. Here we go. If we can be balanced, let's be balanced. Okay. So we're going to get these planted and it's really simple. It's not going to, you know, it's not hard. This part is like some of the fastest that it's going to go with your annuals. Of course, you want them at nice and deep. Put your stool back go through get them all planted so this spot gets mm, a couple of hours of early morning sun and then it's in the shade for the rest of the day um, because of the way the house is located the roof line so forth and so on so these angel wings they are shade but they can handle that morning sun remember shade is anything less than four hours and this certainly gets less than four hours now the further we move forward in the bed it does get a little bit more sun but right here it's four hours or less all right perfect so those should all be nice and centered right there and then what we're going to do, this is like the year of the caladium for me. I'm using caladiums everywhere. I'm going to get some of the white wonder caladiums. Again, we're doing <laughs> gardening yoga right here. We're going to use the um, white wonder. So white wonder is the caladium of the year this year. It's an absolutely gorgeous caladium. It's predominantly white with a green edging and then some pink veining. So I'm just gonna have to play around. These will get huge. So they'll get nice and full and thick, kind of tall in that 12 to 18 inch range. So we're gonna see as far as spacing, whoop, my hummingbird, how we're gonna put those in there. And I'm going to use the White Wonder in a couple of applications. Let's see. That looks a little empty. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add two more. I don't know if y'all can hear with the mic. But my children are inside making breakfast. And I ask them to be quiet, but, you know. <laughs> so if you hear some random noises or thumps and bumps, don't worry. It's just the kids in there. Real life here at Creekside Nursery. I am going to kind of plant these a little bit on an angle. And then just backfill with the soil. That way they'll um, start with that kind of natural tilt over. A little bit that way. Just a little bit. Hopefully the rain will hold off. We'll see.
So the last caladium is planted. This whole container will absolutely just fill in and be thick and full of gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my slow release fertilizer. Again, a little sprinkling, a little zhuzh. Container's almost empty. We just go ahead and use the rest of it. Um, so what this does is it is released by the temperature of the air. So when it's warm, it releases. It's just a nice slow release fertilizer. Gives them some food. So in case I miss a water soluble treatment, they're still good. All right, now you know me. Every time I do a container, I'm gonna fill it up with mulch, top dress it with mulch. Massive, especially in a hay rack like this, water retention is a big deal. So we always go ahead and put mulch between the plants. You can use whatever mulch you have. This is just a double hammered hardwood mulch. It's not so much the exact type of mulch that you have as opposed to it holding in the moisture. Of course, it does make it look a little neater and tidier. So that's a good thing. Get it dressed in there. Another good thing about doing this before it rains is I'll water everybody in, but I am making a hot mess right here. So once we get a rain, <laughs> it'll clean everybody up. Not only the plants here in the hay rack, but the ones below me. Of course, it doesn't hurt to have mulch on them. They'll be fine. All right, we're gonna go to the other side. So it's all planted. This is fantastic. It looks great. You got food, food, mulch, soil, whole nine yards. Plants are in. They're good to go. We're going to move on to the next planter, which is just right over my right shoulder. This is what's the new addition. So let me show you what that's about. Here we have um, the new addition to the shade garden for this year. Um, once I got started into these containers and hay racks and wall hangings, I just couldn't stop. So this fun one again from Kinsman Garden Company, this is called their Peacock Wall Planter. We've been in this house for 17 years and for a long time, I knew that I wanted to have something on this wall. This is the side of our garage. So when you're coming down our driveway, you see this wall and it's obviously has been blank for 17 years. Um, so I thought this would be a great um, planter to have here. This will get all shade. I mean, it will get bright light in the morning, but then it is going to be in the shade. So this one is dimensions on this guy. It's 22 inches. Um, the basket is 22 inches wide and it is 11 inches deep. The overall size of the whole container is 37 inches. So it'll give it a nice um, presence here on the wall. Simply to mount it, Jerry put a nice big thick um, black decking screw like a wood screw into the stud and then it just <clears throat> excuse me it's just hanging on that so it's just simply boop, hang it up so now we get to start planting it okay so we got it here we're still going to go ahead and do our land and see in the bottom hopefully hopefully this is positioned so it won't twist on me too much So land and sea is in the bottom. Pack it down a little bit. PW on top. Not enough, 
So we're going to add some more. <laughs> Come on now. gardening while filming yourself <laughs> by yourself <laughs> can be interesting sometimes especially when you're dealing with a container that doesn't want to stay so I'm gonna try something there we go so what I think I'm gonna do as far as design is I'm using the infinity light purple which really is not very light <laughs> It's a beautiful magenta color. Then I'm gonna put those guys on each side. And these will get to be about 10 to 14 inches. Let's put those there for my pop of color. Then Pegasus, which is a fantastic accent um, foliage begonia. 12 to 18 will be here in the center. I was thinking I was going to do a caladium, but I don't think I'm going to have enough room, which is fine. It's not a problem. And then I do want to do the sweet potato vine. This is that lime green one. I mean, it's already, it's already a great size and going to fill in. So we're going to skip the um, caladium on this one just because I don't think there's going to be enough room. And long term, I am thinking long term here. I don't know, can you see that the roots on this are a purpley pink color? That is really fun. Um, and again, if you hear some funky noises, that's our spigot behind me. Um, Megan is cleaning and has the hose hooked up to this. And so it makes that lovely noise. So I, again, will just apologize in advance for any weird noises that may be coming from the environment because, you know, we're just living life here. And this is gonna take a while, so if she's willing to clean, then I'm not gonna stop her. We're just gonna deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Gotta be flexible. All right, there we go. Again, these are gonna fill in super fast. This whole container is gonna get nice and thick and full really quickly. Now I do want Pegasus to be in the middle as far as centered here. Um, here we go. Right there. And then this is again that great lime green sweet potato vine. It's going to be a vigorous spiller. And again here I've got, it's fine, I want to have a spiller here. This will make a great impact statement. Um, and it's got plenty of room to spill over. So we're going to let it and enjoy it. Just shove it on down in there. Make sure all the roots are covered. And then I'm probably gonna add a little bit more soil to the top. Grab my container. It's like a little bucket here. Just go in and fill in. Again, you don't want any air pockets in your planter around the roots. Because that's just room, an invitation for your roots to dry out. And especially on these annuals in a planter that's a cocoa liner basket, we want to retain as much moisture as we possibly can. Okay, that looks good. And you'll find that if you walk, when you water your containers, of course it may, um, the soil may settle a little bit and you may have to add some again. That's all right, just go in there, do what you need. Um, 
but the mulch does help with that also. There we go. Putting it in that little black tub has really helped. That was a good thing. All right. Okay. So that's all in there. Fertilizer. Give it a couple of scoops. I cannot wait to see how this grows and develops. And then I'm gonna pull, pull the mulch from the bucket here. Okay, I think she's done. Now she's ready to get hung back up. Let's see. Get this guy out of the way. There we go. Get you turned. Well, of course it doesn't want to cooperate, but it'll turn on its own. That's that. Okay, let's see. Those are the little um, extra, the twisty ties holding in the liner. Get rid of that so they're not sticking out. All right, ta-da! So again, this is only gonna get thicker and fuller fill down in here that sweet potato vine basically i bet by the end of the season you won't be able to see the bottom of this container because it's going to be so thick if your sweet potato vine gets out of control don't worry about it just clip it back it you do not hurt sweet potato vine by cutting it back so don't ever think you can't cut your sweet potato vine do it trim it it'll be fine um, the impatience will give me this nice big pop of color right here with the begonia being taller in the middle Cannot wait to see this um, fill in and get fantastically gorgeous through the season. All right, got one more hay rack to go underneath the kitchen sink window. So let's do that and then we can get into the flower bed. I'm not even halfway through this project. I'm already a hot mess. Okay, so here we have hay rack window. Um, there's no way that I can get in there and plant um, that container hanging right here. I don't think so. So what I'm gonna do is just unload it, take it off without messing up my Sun Kings because they are glorious and gorgeous. Um, get that off the wall. Hopefully it's not gonna be too heavy after all that rain. Tiptoeing. There's ferns in here. Oh, lousy bee. All right. Get my foot in there. This is going to be fun. Okay. I need a little bit more leverage. Otherwise, it's going to come crashing down. Okay. <laughs> I'm stuck. Here we go. Okay. Window box is down. I got my other tub. We're gonna try to, cause it's, it's full of water from last night's rain. So we're just gonna toss this. One of the reasons that I am so incredibly late in getting this bed taken care of is because, whoop, hello, granddaddy long legs. Boop, nope, come on, come on, out, here you go. Um, sorry, um, is because I had a little house wren make her nest in this um, hay rack when I still had my pansies, pansies, violas, had, anyway, my fall, winter plantings. So she made her nest and my, my general kind of 
go-to rule of thumb is if there is eggs or babies obviously in the nest then you leave it alone if you catch it soon enough and they're just now starting to make the nest then out you go you get evicted now this one has a lot of the roots from that fall planting in here so it's really kind of hard to get them out again this is why you always start with fresh soil um, and you always don't be chintzy like get a really good quality potting soil you really do get what you pay for so get a nice quality potting soil again i equate potting soil and the fertilizers that you choose for your plants much like i mean it is it's the, it's the diet for the plants so again the olympics are coming up this summer if these olympic athletes eat um you know fast food cheap food for all their meals they're not going to be performing at their peak same thing for your plants you've got to give them high quality potting soil if they're going in a container and fertilizer it is their nutritional source you can't be upset with your plants if they're not performing like they should and you were chintzy on your see look at that all those are roots that's why you got to get rid of them because that is not gonna um, go well for your new plants in here so again don't be cheap hmm. <laughs> that could be a new t-shirt design <laughs> don't be cheap there's other ways to be save money in gardening skimping on your potting soil is not one of them let's see if I can dump this out now all right there we go okay so she's empty let's get this out of the way get my soil okay Here we go, compost. This one's really deep. I think it's, oh gosh, I don't remember. Again, I'll link the ones that I have in the video description because I don't remember the exact size on this one, but it's nice and wide. Um, I would say 12 to 18 inches deep this way, but it's nice and deep this way, which makes a good difference for your plants okay potting soil on top I think we'll just go ahead and put it all Potting soil is in. See, I told you it holds a lot more soil than maybe you think it does. All right, again, we're gonna go really simple on this design. Very, very simple. Um, I think this time what I'm gonna do is add my slow release before I add my plants. Make it a little easier. All right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the theme of the begonias and the caladiums. Um, this spot because of its location just gets more sun so instead of using the angel wing begonias i am going to use the surefire begonias surefire begonias are like one of my absolute without a doubt top favorite annuals these guys are just so easy high performing beautiful plants they can do sun or shade so it's perfect for this location um, we will still have the pink flowers as in the angel wing begonias, but you will notice that it has a darker foliage to it. Um, it will have a little bit of a variation if it's in a complete shade or complete sun. It goes back and forth. Um, these have been sitting in more sun, so they might, they might change a little bit 
as it season goes on. But these will get, let's see, what is it? Yeah, 12 to 24 inches tall. Again, not quite sure that they'll get that tall when they're being in a container. In the landscape, they can easily get the two feet tall. They will completely fill in. We're gonna have holes right now. It's fine, I'm not worried about it. We're gonna watch this grow and develop. This will fill in, get nice and thick. You will see no soil whatsoever. And then we're gonna bring back the caladiums. Again, I'm gonna use the same caladium throughout this entire bed to bring some continuity, consistency within the bed. Um, that's a great little trick when you're designing your bed is trying to figure out, you know what I'm gonna do? See, this is, this is how I garden. I'm gonna take these surefires, excuse me. We're gonna put them more towards the edge, more towards the back edge push you down in there, soil back, you're coming out. Here we go. Now we're cooking. Okay. I'm not worried about this gap. They'll fill in. Now I can take the caladium. Again, I'm going to plant these a little bit closer to each other than maybe you normally would. Again, this whole container will end up being one giant mound of plants and it will not take long. I swear you can see caladiums grow before your very eyes in the south. Especially now that it's June, these babies take off. They thrive in our heat and humidity. I don't know if you can tell right now, but I am sweating. Like the dew point, oh my gosh. It's like the air is so thick, you can just basically, oh my gosh, stir it with a stick. Okay, so they love this kind of weather. We may melt, caladiums love it. They thrive in this. Okay, again, very simple container. Not a lot of fuss, not a lot of muss. It is just here, it's beautiful. Again, it's not gonna take long, huge and thick. Your caladiums will kind of spill over a little bit, but they're not gonna be that great, huge spiller that you, like the sweet potato vine is. All right, now we've gotta pick this baby up so I can get to the mulch. Yeah. Hold it with one hand, mulch it with the other. I love having this window box right beside my um, kitchen sink, because if you're an adult, you know how much time you spend in your kitchen sink, right? There's always dishes to be done. Um, but this is really so much fun because it is just, I mean, like I bird's eye view of this container. So last year, oh my gosh, I had so much wildlife in this thing. I had praying mantises that were in here. I had all sorts of little like little green skinks that would come, lizards, whatever you want to call them. They're the lime green ones and they do their throat and it's orange. So they were in there. Um, just all sorts of fun things that you get to see close. And then when Mama Bird, Mama Wren, was building her nest, that's how I knew I had a nest. It's because I kept seeing her come in and out, of course, and she would always bring them, once they hatched, all these great bugs. So it was fun to see what wrens feed their babies. But she had spiders and worms, little caterpillars, all sorts of great bugs. So if you get a chance to see a, watch a, bird nest up close go for it it's a lot of fun okay so this one is done now obviously i'm gonna have to have somebody help me um, lift this up if the sun kings weren't there i could do it i just don't want to destroy them because they're so pretty so i'm going to enlist some help and we're going to get this sucker me wait a minute, hang on okay you ready you good Going? <gasps> Perfect. Ha! Tiptoeing through the Sun Kings. Whoo! Perfect. Hayrack is up. She's good. Mama, help me. The Sun Kings are 
happy and doing well. We're going to next turn our attention really close, really, hopefully this will go faster. <laughs> Uh, it's going well. It's all good. It's all good. We're going to fill up this tall blue. This is just a traditional container. I love using containers mixed in with the bed because it brings you some height. Obviously, you got this great blue pop of color. So what we're going to do in here, again, I'm going to put some caladiums in here and then some silver fall, dichondra silver falls. It's that gorgeous silvery gray that will trail over. Um, so we're going to get it in here. The pot has been here. I like where it is. Um, Bashful Betty, my sweet girl from Unique Stone. In the winter, she was moved over because it just made sense based on what was here. She quickly got taken over by the Sun King, so I had to slide her over a little bit. So she is here. We're going to have the caladiums here, silver falls, bring some fun height. So that's what we're going to do really quick. Again, this is just going to be basic planting. I'm just going to show you exactly what I do, um, but we're going to plant it the same way that we did everything else. Compost in the bottom, soil on the top, plants, slow release, mulch, whole nine yards. We're really doing some gardening yoga in here. Oh, wow. Very close to being done. There's a couple more things that I want to do in this bed. First of all, I have got several perennials here that are still in their nursery pots that needed to need to go ahead and get in the ground. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the power planter auger. Last time you saw me use that thing, I about killed myself because it was in that horrible dry red clay over there by the patio. This should be an absolute dream. It should be nice and moist and fluffy. Well, it may not be really fluffy because it's probably going to be wet. But we're going to go ahead and get in there. And I'm just going to plant these. Y'all have seen me plant a ton of times. Obviously, what we're going to use is the power planter auger. Get a nice good hole. Get these perennials planted. I am going to plant them basically at ground level, maybe just a little bit higher. Because all of these are... Um, they love the moisture. So what I have that I'm going to get planted, this is a white feather um, hosta. So what happens is in the spring when it emerges, it emerges, excuse me, it is a pure white leaf. As it matures and ages, you can see it takes on the green veining and then it will turn green by the end of the summer. It's just a really fun, unique hosta. So I'm going to have one of those in there. Then I have these two eucharas. These are the new trial garden, um, trial plants from Walter's Gardens. These are going to be proven winners. They're starting a new series. It's the, um, oh shoot, I forget what the name of the series is, but these are evening gown. So evening gown is just how I equate it is like 
um, black pearl on steroids. Big, huge, fat, beautiful leaves. Um, really pretty little pink little flowers. Again, eucharas are mostly for their foliage, not necessarily for their blooms, but the pollinators love them and I've seen hummingbirds on them too. So I've got two of those. They're gonna go in the ground. Also, it kind of mimics that dark foliage, mimics and brings in the dark stems of the zebra hydrangea. So that's really fun. So those will go in the ground. Then in this pot, this blue pot, that is another, this is Smoke and Mirrors. That's another new Eucara from Walters that we are trialing. I have several of them in the ground over at the nursery. These will be in this pot to see how they do in a pot. This little section of the yard, the garden, gets a little bit of that afternoon sun because of the funky line of the roof. So it's going to get a little bit more sun. So that will be a test as well. Moving on down the line, we have this beautiful fern. Now, this is Dre's Dagger. It's not a proven winner's plant, so please just ignore the pot. I needed to put it in a pot, and obviously we have a lot of those. So this was just a spare pot that I used. It's gonna be a great perennial fern. Um, it's gonna love it right here because anytime the hose is on, it, we have a leaky hose. So this spot gets nice and damp, so it will do fantastic. And then down here, I have a trio of the spot on pulmonaria from Proven Winners. So those will go in kind of a little bit of a triangle area, be beautiful, completely different foliage than what is already here. But I do have a Queen of Hearts Brunnero down there. So those foliages will kind of mimic each other again a little bit of tie-in between the bed. So what I'm gonna do is just simply um, get to planting and y'all can enjoy, sit back, relax, grab a beverage and watch me garden.
Okay, my friends, the bed is done. I am finished for today. So let's just do a little recap of what I did because most of it I talked you through it, but then there were some things at the end that I just went ahead and did. Um, of course, we got all of the planters are nice and full of brand new annuals for the season, both the hay rack here at, we call the kitchen table, and the hay rack behind me at the kitchen sink. Of course, with the brand new um, peacock urn at, on this wall in front of me that will bring lots of interest and height and texture to it, otherwise a blank wall. Of course, you saw me, I went ahead and got the perennials into the ground. As I suspected, the ground was nice and wet, and so it was easy to, to till up with the auger. Lots of great earthworms in there, so that was wonderful. Everybody got biotone, and um, if you remember back in the fall when we kind of prepped this bed for the winter, this entire bed got um, land and sea compost over the entire bed. So I think that is a great example of why everybody is looking so good right now and very happy and healthy. Um, I can come back through here through the season if I want to and use plant tone to go ahead and give them an extra boost of fertilizer. Interestingly enough, this bed is not on irrigation. So um, we think that's one reason why the Wiggles and Squiggles hosta is a little bit bleached out because last year it was not. And um, obviously it's been here for a couple of years now, but we have hit some really high temperatures. And until just last night, we haven't had rain in a couple of weeks and they were not getting water. Um, so I was talking with my mom and we think it's because the high temperatures and not really any you know, source of water is that they kind of bleached out. Um, because normally they would be nice and vibrant even though right now we get we're getting sun it get does this whole bed does get a break from the hot afternoon sun so i think that's what's going on with my wiggles and squiggles so everybody's in the ground um, i did go ahead and trim up kind of prune up some of the perennials the sun king those are actually two they're they're planted about four feet apart from each other because i wanted to have a really big impact well that is happening possibly this fall i might take one of them out move it somewhere and take the other one and center it underneath the window. But for right now, they're just gorgeous and glorious. So we're gonna leave them alone. This is not the time to move them. So I did prune them back a little bit because it was covering up one of my autumn frost hostas and my ghost fern. So I just went back as far as I needed to and just took out individual little limbs to let the sunlight into those perennials so that they can grow and be happy as well. Brunnera, the queen of hearts, it had the old where the blooms were, the flower stalks took that off. Same thing with the euchras down there. Just kind of cleaned everybody up, saw some weeds, pulled those, home nine yards. Then came back through and planted just a couple of annuals. There is this the endless illumination broalia from Proven Winters. It's my favorite annual for the shade. I think I will always forever put this in the ground. It is just that gorgeous blue star flower with a white center. They get nice and big and mounded. And so it'll bring me some more blue in here, a continuous color. So they are popped periodically throughout, tucked amongst the hostas, bring lots of good color. And then down on the end near the Let's Dance Starlight, that hydrangea, normally I put terrinia around the bottom of it and it just makes this gorgeous ground cover. Went a little different this year and did some white sun patience because that area when the sun, remember the sun will set in front of the house and it cuts through the porch. So that area does get some late hot afternoon sun. Terrinia did fine there. It was a sun or shade terrinia. The sun patience will do great there and it'll bring me nice, um, some height fill in with beautiful white blooms and it will do fantastic so those are there i did have to stop um, i was planting the first three and lo and behold there was a yellow jackets nest that they were building in the ground if you are not familiar with yellow jackets i am very happy for you because <laughs> they are mean they are basically like a wasp so they're a stinging insect flying insect um, they're not docile like honeybees at all they build their nest in the ground and um, we've never had a nest there before uh, but they go in and they just make these tunnels in the ground and they will come after you and just get you like they are just mean 
So thankfully I was able to back off. Everybody left me alone and we were good. And I just moved on and Jerry's gonna take care of those later when he gets home. And then finally I went through, when I was planting some of the perennials, I did find some little tea tiny baby slugs. So remember those slugs are the, the critters that are gonna put holes in your hostas, possibly your hydrangeas, different plants. It'll be a hole right in the middle of the leaf. Not like a nibble from the outside, but they'll just make them really holy. Again, it doesn't kill the plant. It just makes them look really ugly. And I have been faithful applying the snail and slug bait in the bed um, since they emerged in the early spring. So you do that every couple of weeks. Um, this is an organic solution. You can use Bonide has some and Espoma has some. And it's just pellets. You just sprinkle it on the ground or in your container and then the snails and slugs will go and eat it and um, it erupts their digestive system, digestive system and they die. But it is organic, you can use it. It, say, it says on the, on the label that it's safe to use around in your vegetable garden, um, around pets, those kinds of things. So that is in the ground and I think, trying to go back through my brain, all the things that I did the hay rocks, the planters are not on water, so I will I will be having to water them unless it rains um, consistently, which odds are here in the south, that's not going to happen. So I will water them. Um, my annuals, I will start getting them well watered in the ground, and then you just kind of maintain and go from there. Again, um, pretty simple with the flowering annuals. I will use the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer about once a week on that. Really gives them that nice dark lush green color with lots and lots of blooms which is what we love to have those pops of color in the bed. Um, but I'm so glad to have this bed done. I see this bed constantly all the time from inside the house and every time we drive up to the house and so to have this done is just such Oh, a satisfying feeling and I know that we're going to have um, weeks and months of enjoyment from these plants so I am excited about that. I am a hot mess, literally hot, sweaty, dirty, filthy mess so I am going to go inside and uh, have a nice cold drink of water and get cleaned up before we start on the next project. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.